on Kayla with Damn the Diets for another video and I want to share another part of my journey with you. So this part and specifically of my experience on all different kinds of fasting. So I know that fasting is like a craze, it's a fad, it's a trend right now. Everyone's going on some type of fast and it differs from each person to person of what a fast means. So some people are like, well, this is real fasting. And other people are like, no, this is real fasting. Or other people are like, well, I want to fast, but I don't want to go to those extremes. So I'm going to do this kind of fast. And so there's all different kinds of levels or varying types of fasts going around, floating around today. So the ones that I tried in specific, and it's not limited to, but these are the ones that I want to talk about today, is specifically coconut water fasting, coconut oil fasting, pure water fasting. And then I also just want to briefly touch, like I did fasts of mono fruit island fasting, where you just eat one kind of fruit for weeks on end, or juice fasting. So literally just juicing a bunch of fruit and vegetables, or either just fruit juicing for weeks, or vegetable juicing for just for weeks, so no sugar, because you know, I was trying to go on the no sugar cleansing to get rid of candida, get rid of the parasites, get rid of my IBS, get rid of the bloating, the constipation, heal my gut, cleanse my liver. I did like blessed herbs cleansing. Oh, man, seriously, I tried it all. So the only thing I didn't try is dry fasting. That freaked me out. It's just literally no liquids, no foods. Literally, like, if you do that, you're just killing yourself. That's literally starvation to the max. You know, our bodies can only survive for weeks without food, but water? I mean, come on. That is, like, asking to die. <laughs> like, we are compromised by a huge percentage of water, like I talked about before. We need water. Like, I'm not... I never went down that road, but I did go down these other crazy roads, so I have no room to talk. I was pretty extreme, I was pretty crazy, and I took it too, too far. I wanna talk about what happened to me when I was fasting, during the fast, and after the fast, and why I came to the conclusion that I hate fasting and I think it's complete bullshit. Complete baloney, and it's just another fad. People want the quick fix. They want to lose the 10 pounds like within a week, but then they end up gaining all of it back right after they rebound and they swell up. They gain all the weight back plus more because in the act of fasting, you're lowering your metabolism. You're lowering your body's ability to digest and process foods. So then when you add back in whole foods again, your body and your digestion is like, whoa, I can't handle this yet. So you have to slowly like a baby reintroduce foods into your body if you want to be able to digest those foods again properly and not have a major reaction to the food after. So another reason why when we cut more foods from our diet and we're still eating though, we start to react more to these foods because when we cut something, we lower our capability to digest those kinds of foods. It's not that they're bad for us, it's just that when we cut something for so long and then try to go back to eat it, let's say carbs, then people like to call it the carb flu and they get sick. But really, it's just you're lowering your ability to be able to digest these foods. That's why you get sick when you cut them out too. You're not supposed to cut them. That's why you get fatigued and irritable and all kinds of problems arise when you cut these things from your diet. So, my experience. And I'll try to go in as much detail as I can, but this was quite a few years ago, so it's hard to remember everything in detail. And I actually lost my journal which I wanted to be able to read to you guys. I can't find my journal throughout this crazy period of my life. I documented a lot of it because I was obsessed. I was hyper-focused on everything I put in my body, everything that came out of my body, everything that was happening to my body, how I felt, how I was thinking, how shitty it was. Most of it was how shitty I was feeling and how miserable my life was. Must have said something, right? It must, it should have like, showed me that what I was doing was not good for me, but whatever, people tell you to just push through it, just push through the detox symptoms, it's just detox and you're gonna get through it. And on the other side, you're gonna be so much better and so much healthier and yada yada. No, that's not what happened to me. <laughs> so this is just my experience, but I want to share this with you because I see a lot of this going on. It is a lot more bad from fasting and cleansing and juicing 
then I see good. So it's about time someone talks about the bad because everyone likes to talk about the highlights and the good, but then it's like a pride thing or an ego thing that nobody wants to talk about the bad that happened because I don't know what it is, but it takes a hit to the ego. Like if you were wrong about what you were saying or cause you were so excited at one point that it's bad. So you don't want to come clean or you don't want to express the hard times. You only want to express the highlights cause it makes you look better as a person. I don't know the reasoning, but whatever it is, when you talk to the people behind the scenes, they're really struggling and suffering. So why is it that we only see the good parts? There's no wonder that there's a bunch of comparisonitis going around because we're only seeing the good parts of people's lives. We're not seeing the hardships and that's part of life. That's a big part of life is the downtime, the awkward moments, the silence, the just being comfortable sitting next to someone and not talking or laughing. Like that's a big part of life that doesn't get shown too much because that's not exciting. That's not adrenaline pumping. Okay, anyways, back on track. <laughs> I need to start talking about my experience fasting. And I've kind of touched on a couple of things, but let's see. Yeah, I tried separately coconut water only fasting um, because I heard, you know, it was high in amino acids. You still got your sugar, but it was enough to be a fast. So you would get the cleansing effects on your body. Uh, coconut oil, in uh, another sense, is very, you know, they say it's very cleansing on your GI, very healing because you get the saturated fat, which is a main component of all your cell membranes, of all your cells in your body, especially in the GI tract, and so many other things. But along with it, it's antiparasitic, antiviral, antibacterial, so it was supposed to clean out, wipe out the candida, wipe out the parasites that I thought that I was facing, heal my IBS, heal my digestive problems, heal my food allergies that happened only after I started restricting my in my diet and over-exercising and just being extreme with my allowed foods or bad foods or off-limit foods. So, hint, hint, <laughs> I was fine before that. So, that's why I went on it because I was in this mindset where I was trying to find the golden ticket to heal my digestion, heal my acne, heal my hormonal problems, and all of these things. And I thought eventually I would suffer enough to be able to get to the other side where all of a sudden my health would click back on and I would be the healthiest that I'd ever been in my life and look like all these other people on YouTube and their books that they claim on their blogs and whatever. I would be as healthy as they claim to be. No, that never happened and I was in this for years. <laughs> Just each day my health and my life got worse. Every day I felt scared to go to bed because I thought that I was dying. I felt as if my body was shutting down and dying on me. That is a big sign. Why do we overlook these kinds of symptoms? I mean, the inevitable result was I went through the fasting. Of course, you get fatigued, you get irritable, you get hungry, you're obsessed with food. You cannot wait till the fast is over because you just want to eat again all your favorite foods. And the whole time you're fasting, you're just thinking about all the foods that you get to devour after you get off of the fast and you're planning in the exact order of what foods you're gonna eat, how you're gonna eat them, how you're gonna prepare them. And you're so stoked to be able to eat those foods again. Yeah, a few days into your fast, you can lose your appetite completely, but at the same time, that's a starvation response, your body's biological response to starvation. But at the same time, as you're losing your appetite or whatever, and you're not consumed with food after a few days of just water fasting, you also get very dizzy and you can't even stand up or get out of bed and you have no energy to do anything. But meanwhile, you're fasting on just I was just on coconut water. I was just on pure water for 10 days. I was on coconut oil, just spooning down tablespoons of coconut oil day in and day out for 10 days too. All of it seemed to be like a 10 day time span. And I did these things over and over again. It wasn't just one time, it was like over and over again. And I would obsess on what was coming out of me and you know, you would do enemas, water enemas to help cleanse out your system too wipe out all your beneficial bacteria. I couldn't sleep at all. I had no sex drive. I still was not getting my period at this point. My hair was still falling out. I had no energy, like my limbs were just dead weight. I had no energy to even go on a walk up the block. And then, so once I got off of the fast, 
my digestion would bloat right back up. So during the fast, I'd be like, oh, I have a flat stomach, you know. Uh, my digestion is calmed down. It's doing great. My digestion is so much better. Well, no shit. You're not digesting anything. No fibers going in. No food is going in for your body to have to process. Like, yeah, it's going to stomach's gonna flatten you have no food in there rebound constipation my extreme hunger and mental and physical hunger was through the roof i would then end up binging i would you know lose weight i did not need to lose any weight and i lost weight on the fast and then i gained a bunch back but knowing me back at that point i was so into my control that i didn't allow too much weight to come on so I would just go back to restricting in some way, whether it was raw veganism or paleo or ketogenic or whatever. Once I did the last water fast, I swelled up like a balloon. I had so much edema. I had pains throughout my stomach, like as if someone was stabbing my stomach. Food allergies were through the roof. They, get, they got worse every time I went on a cleanse or a juice or a juicing fast or any type of fast. And yeah, everything just got worse each time. They didn't get better. I gained a lot of weight back <laughs> and it was very uncomfortable after that last water fast. And literally it's just that your body is lowering your metabolism because it goes into conservation mode, it goes into starvation mode, like legit starvation mode. Nothing's coming in, so the body's like, wow, our environment is scarce, so we need to slow down the metabolism, we need to slow down all of the organ functions, so your heart, your kidneys, your liver, your digestive system in general, so you know your stomach, your pancreas slows down the production of digestive enzymes, so then you get probably gastroparesis and it, the food just sits there because it's not being able to get fully digested. It just sits there because it's been shut off for so long that when you put food back into your system, you don't just, it doesn't just go back like that. No, your body has been shutting down the internal systems as a conservation mode because then whatever does come in, it wants to extract every amount that does come in. So it slows down the metabolism and the digestion to be able to extract every bit of nutrient that it can and then it holds on to it it doesn't use it so then you store fat really easily and you gain a lot of weight now i'm not here to bash biblical or religious reasons for fasting no that's not what i'm here for i'm here for people that take it to the extreme because their motivation is weight loss or they think that they need to get healthier and they keep pushing the fasting on them and trying different fasting to try to heal their body and in, a res in an act to try to get healthier or fitter, they end up losing some of their health. That's who I'm speaking to. So you can have the permission like, dude, you don't have to keep pushing yourself on these fasts if your health is actually getting worse. Like you don't have to keep pushing and detoxing and pushing through the negative symptoms if your body's telling you like, I need food and I need a lot of it. It's just being able to listen to your body again and not keep pushing something that's pushing on a door that's not wanting to open or else you're gonna find something that you don't want. So, and then of course there's other types of fast fasting too that don't have to do with food, restricting your food. What about just going into nature and tuning out or fasting from technology, fasting from social media, because you just are overwhelmed with the world and the culture and you just want to get away from all of the noise and be able to tune into your body and listen to your body again. It's nothing wrong with that. You're not really starving your body of anything, a necessary element. <laughs> So that could be highly beneficial. So for 24 to 48 hours, turn off the TV, turn off the phone, turn off the notifications, put it on do not disturb mode, uh, go out with some loved ones, make some real memories in person, in contact, uh, bonding, connection, without the pressure to have to do it a certain way or be a certain way while you do it or be like someone else, aspire towards someone else and you could just be yourself, whatever it may look like for you that could help just clear your mind. Maybe, yeah, if your body is actually asking for no food because you're sick, maybe of the flu, that's natural though. You're not forcing your body against its natural nature to want food. So if your body is asking for food and you're like, nope, you can't have it, that's unnatural and you're going to trigger your body into a semi-starved state because it wants food actually. 
Now, if you're sick and your body's lowering the ghrelin hormone, which is hunger because it wants to fight off an infection or whatever for a short period of time and you get the stomach flu or something. And so it knows what it's doing versus you trying to tell the body what it should do and what it should want or when it should want it. Here's the difference. Or what if you wake up in the morning and you're just absolutely not hungry, the thought of eating disgusts you and you're not coming from a restrictive background and you literally just are not hungry in the morning. Yeah, don't eat. It's, you know, you, you're listening to your body though. You're not trying to force your body to do something it doesn't wanna do. You're not hungry at a certain time of day when we label, oh, we should eat now because it's 12 p.m. If you're not hungry, don't eat, kinda like that. We go into a natural fasting state when we go to sleep at night and our body is designed for that. Yeah, it's designed to be able to fast when food is scarce, when times were tough and we didn't have a McDonald's or a grocery store on every corner. But nowadays, we don't have that problem. So why are we forcing ourselves to have that problem when we are so fortunate to have access to food, when people would kill to have access to food and have that safety and comfortability. They knew where their food was coming from at each given time and they didn't. their body didn't have to go into starvation mode to survive. No, we're so lucky and fortunate to be able to have that in our modern day and we still choose to abuse that and be very ungrateful very unappreciative and just force ourselves to go back in time when we have all this access it just doesn't make sense so with all of this said if you're able to do this kind of stuff and go on a fast and you're perfectly fine and your body it does not get extreme hunger, it doesn't rebound the weight gain, it doesn't, you don't go nuts, you don't go crazy, you don't ruin your hormones, you don't lose your period, you don't lose your hair, you don't um, lose your digestion and you don't develop food allergies and you your mental, physical, and emotional state is fine after fasting, okay, then good for you. Do what works for you. This is for the people, like I said, that it's the complete opposite. And they're just trying to do what everyone else is doing because it's a fad or it's a trend. And they're pushing their bodies into a very harmful and dangerous state to try to do so. And this was me. And I had to wake the fuck up and be like, Kayla, this isn't working for you. Stop. You need to eat and you need to stop restricting yourself. And you can't have any restrictions anymore. And you need to just let your body feed itself, refeed, and rest. And stop giving in to all these magical diets and dogmas and fasting trends or cleansing trends or health fads, overtraining fads, all of these things that someone's telling me to do because it worked for them and so it must work for me and everyone else. It's just, that's not the reality. What may work for me may not work for you. And what may work for you may not work for me and Susie and Joe. We're all unique and we all have to listen to our body to prevent serious damage, serious neurological damage, damage serious physical damage, serious organ damage, serious micro and macro deficiencies. And literally, to just get our lives back so we can experience what life is supposed to be about. And it's experience it with loved ones. It's not about being obsessed with being clean and fit and perfect diet or the perfect body or whatever. There's so much more to life than that, than counting and calculating and tracking what, you, what comes in and then tracking what goes out. <laughs> So what I also see is people in recovery or, you know, they're trying to recover from a diet or, you know, whatever. What I see is then people yo-yo. And so they gain weight because they've lowered their metabolism and their digestion and they've gained weight and more than they had ever before, the diet or the clean diet or the over-exercising regime. And so they go on a, some kind of fast or a cleanse because that's what they need to do to get this off because they just don't want it. They don't want to deal with it. So they get triggered back into it and they go on intermittent fasting or they go on a cleanse or they go on a gluten-free, sugar-free diet and to cleanse their body. And then they just run into the same problems and they continue to be the hamster on the wheel. And this was me for years and I see this a lot. And they never get anywhere they where they never get to where they want to be they don't get that freedom that they want the sanity that they want because they never stick through it and they just keep 
triggering their body back into starvation mode. They just trigger their body back into conservation mode. So if you don't want this anymore, go watch my other videos. I have so much on this on how to do this, how to break free or to join my seven week coaching program, the links below for that. And I'll guide you step by step on how to recover from this. Get your body, get your freedom back, get your hormones back, get your digestion back, all of it. It's possible. So fasting, water fasting, juicing, cleansing, it's just not a long-term solution to your problem of wanting to lose weight, wanting to get super clean and healthy. You're just gonna run yourself into the ground and you're going to be very unhappy after the cleanse. After the fast, you're gonna get all the rebound symptoms that I talked about and it's going to be shitty. So I also want to note too, I didn't just do a water fast on my own like I did all these other fasts on my own. I actually went to True North Health Medical Center up in Northern California where I'm not trying to promote this by the way I'm just telling you like I actually wanted to do it the right way and I was medically supervised to water fast it was bad and I ended up you know talking them into like I'm just gonna stop like this is my body like I could not do it any longer and so I did I ended up stopping and they were supporting me through the stopping but yeah I was actually medically supervised with a bunch of doctors up there and it was the worst thing so I know that you could hear this from me, it was the worst thing ever, and then you could go talk to someone else that says, oh, water fasting was the best thing I've ever done in my life. And you never know the full story. Because back in that day, I was also touting that the water fast was the best thing I had ever done, that it healed my digestion, that it normalized my taste buds, and I wasn't craving all these foods anymore, and all these different claims. So I too was there at that point because I didn't want to admit how bad it was. But really, I felt like my nervous system was shutting down like it was burning and just like a broken electrical cord all throughout my body. I could not sleep. I had such strong cravings. I just felt like my body was shutting down on me. So yeah, for those who are like, well, you just didn't do it right. <laughs> I did it right. I did it as best as I could to my knowledge. And I researched the shit out of all these different kinds of fads and fasting and juicing and whatnot. Your body can clean itself naturally. Like it doesn't need you to go on a reboot or a 30 day challenge juice cleanse or a 10 day juicy fast to help kickstart it to weight loss and cleansing itself and to get healthy and to, et to detox. The body has it covered. That's what the kidneys are for. That's what the liver is for. That's what the lymphatic system is for and everything and every part of the system. It's naturally doing that on a daily basis without us having to kick start it into it. And that this can only happen though if your body's healthy enough to be able to carry out these functions, if your organs are healthy enough to do so. And this comes by feeding your body consistently on a daily basis, not just here or there, or one day a week, or a, like four hours a day. The body needs consistency, it needs a lot of energy, it needs it from carbs, it needs it from fats, it needs it from sugars, it needs it from protein, it needs it from all of it. It needs a whole balance, not high this, low that, it just needs all of it. And it needs it on a consistent basis. And this is how your body's gonna do it on its own.